Welcome friends to the Someone Gets Me podcast. I am your host, Diane Allen, and I am so delighted that you're here. This podcast was created because I believe there is a visionary leader inside each one of us who is waiting to be seen. In each episode of Someone Gets Me, you will hear useful tips from successful visionaries who will share their stories about how being seen has allowed them to take their vision out into the world with action. Joy and deep interconnection with Dina Martin. Hi everybody, it's Diane here at Someone Gets Me. And Dina Martin is taking time out of her very busy life to talk to us about joy and having a deep interconnection. Now, some of this came through teaching through her father, Dean Martin, and she'll talk about that, but also it's her own life path and her own career. Dina is somebody I would call a multi-potentialite. She has all kinds of great things that she does, and she keeps going. Like, she hasn't stopped. We're not done yet. There's more great things coming through her. So I'm really delighted, Dina, that you came on the show today to talk to us about that joy and being deeply interconnected. So welcome to Someone Gets Me. Well, thank you so much. And I know you get me. (laughs) (laughs) Right, exactly. So talk to me a little bit, or talk to all of us, I guess, a little bit about interconnection for you. like. You're a pilot and you're an author and a radio host and, of course, a great musician, you know, you. And, and all kinds of other things that you do that probably things we don't even know about that are fascinating. And so talk to us about your interconnection. How does that work for you? You know, it's something that, uh, first of all, I was born with it. It's in my DNA that, you know, because my dad was like that, my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, we all had a, a, a thirst, you know, for life. I want to... I, first of all, I'm happy I wake up every day, you know, t- t- touch wood. And once that happens, it's like, okay, what else can I do today? What new thing can I learn? So for me, I start off with making my bed. Okay. It's, it's a good thing to do. <laughs> Make yes. your bed. Even, even if my husband's in, I got to, he says, we're making it with me. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> Get up, make the bed and start your day. You know, so for me, um, first of all, being, healthy and feeling and feeling good. That's one of the most important. So I like to eat right, exercise, you know, which is very difficult when I'm on the road. Right. Of course, this past year, we've not been on the road, (laughs) you know, right. uh, Stuck here. And that's a whole other interesting thing. But, you know, to uh, to exercise, eat right. And that, you know, so that gets me and to breathe. So that gets me set up every day is to, uh, you know, take care of myself to make sure that I, you know, I, I feel good and, and think about new things that I'm going to do that day. It might be learning a new song. It might be going out for a, a, a different hike, a different walk, whatever it is. There's always something for me to do that's new. Now, as you say, you know, I am a pilot. Now that was uh, pretty wild being a pilot. You know, my brother, <laughs> it was, you know, my brother used to fly me to, uh, yeah, Dean Paul used to, we used to fly to Palm Springs and I, you know, and I thought, oh, you know, this is kind of fun. Then I thought, well, you know what, maybe I can do that. Why can't I learn how to do that? Sure. You know, my brother can, and I know all these women who, you know, I said, why can't I? And so that's one of the things, you know, well, why, why can't I? Why not? Let's try it. Then, of course, when I met my husband, he's a pilot anyway. So, you know, he said, and it was funny. He said, you know what, Dean, I'd love to take you on trips. And, you know, I'll fly, you know, a plane. And, and he said, I think it would be important if you could land the plane. I said, that would be, he said, in case something happened to me. Okay. So that's something else. So learn how to fly a plane, land a plane in case something happened to it. So, you know, we did that too. Because they don't just teach you how to land a plane. Okay. You have to learn how to fly a plane. And so the whole thing. So that was all very interesting to me. Okay. So I have to... I have to learn how to do this. And at that same time, I was writing my book. All right. So I'm learning how to fly. I'm writing my book about, you know, my life. And it's called Memories Are Made of This, Dean Martin Through His Daughter's Eyes. So it was all a a continuation of learning things. So then I had to learn more about my dad. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to go to Steubenville, Ohio, where he was born and raised. You know, he was he was born there. So I went there to meet all the people that he had known. So it's, again, learning something new, finding out about my father, about my, uh, you know, my background, my, right. my life, 
because then you make all those connections in, in your life. So now I'm going way, way back. This is even, you know, this is way before the book because now I'm, I'm going back to, you know, my, I skip around a lot because that's what my brain does. You know, I'm thinking, what else can I do? You know, I, <laughs> right. Exactly. But, just keep on know, going. <laughs> I really, I really do that. And so going back to when I was a little girl and finding out that, you know, my dad was Dean Martin and, you know, well, that's great, but he's my dad, but he was Dean Martin. So other people, you know, thought, wow, isn't that, isn't that, something? well, yeah, that's something. It's fantastic. But knowing my dad and he taught me, he brought us up right. Okay. He had a good sense of humor. He was down to earth. Right. He never got puff, puffed up about himself. You know, he was just, he just worked hard. And in fact, one day later on, he said, Dina, the reason why I work is so I can take care of you kids and play golf. So his, th all right. So he had a great sense of humor yes. and he taught us, you know, good manners and respect. And that's something I think that's very important for, for people. I don't know what kids are doing today, but I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to be negative. There are a lot of fabulous ones, you right. know, so it's respect and, and, and good manners and uh, keeping involved in things and uh, wanting to, you know, of course I went to Catholic school. So I was brought up, you know, that way with the, with the nuns, you know, you know right. sister Mary Joseph and, you know, playing in sports. So everything was kind of, um, I wanted to be involved in everything because I was curious about things. I wanted to go into sports. I wanted to play basketball, baseball, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, tennis. So that keeps you, uh, keeps you fit. It keeps your mind uh, going. And that's one of the things, you know, about my dad. He would like to get up every morning and go play golf, even before he was doing his TV show. It was something that he, um, it helped him with his health and his mind so he could sit and think. And he was very organized. So for me, I've become just like that. I need to get up, do things, be organized, everything in its place. And um, yeah, you know, so it was, uh, it was an interesting life. You know, I'm going back, you know, 72 years. So it's, it's all of this that I have done in my life. Aside from, because I wanted to stay fit, I became an aerobics instructor. You know, <laughs> see, I didn't even know that one. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. You know, when I saw right. that, uh, what uh, it was uh, Jane Fonda. So Jane Fonda's right. doing these things. Well, wait a minute. Maybe I'll go to one of her classes, and I thought, well, maybe I can do that. Sure. Okay. So why can't I do that if she can do that? Sure. So it's all about learning and saying why not, and uh, and there is no reason why not. You know, try and do something. The worst that can happen is you fail at it. So then you learn. So you learn something. So it's all of those things. I went to college in England, you know, Dartington College of Arts. I was, you know, and when I was in school, I took piano lessons and tap dancing lessons and ballet lessons. So I was very lucky, lucky that way to be able to have the, uh, the opportunity to do that. So it's always about learning something new, uh, staying active, you know, thinking, I mean, I even did, oh my God, my husband would probably think I'm nuts. Um, <laughs> You know, when I, I went to the Maharishi, you know, I went and I, you know, I have a mantra, you know, when the Beatles were out and the Beatles were right, out right. in India and they, well, why don't I try that? You know? And so, you know, so I went down and I met the Maharishi, got my, uh, what is that? My, um, my mantra. And so it's, it's all about learning new things and then seeing what they're like and, and just staying connected uh, in your life with, with everyone around you and what you're doing and with the universe and just, you know, and that's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I do and it's just in me. And that's, that's that joy that, you know, that first through you. So ha was there, has there been a time through all of this? Cause you're like definitely an explorer, curious, like just keep going after it person, which I, I completely relate to. Have you had, did you ever have any difficulty like with teachers or other outside people outside of your family that like, didn't get you that would like shake their ha head and go, I don't know why she does all these things. Or do you have to do so many things? Or did you, have you ever had to deal with that? Well, you know, never in a negative way. People were like more amazed. You know, they were amazed probably at the idea that that I would do it. That there was someone who was, you know, say, and I, you know, I hate going back to Dean Martin's daughter, but it's a huge part of my life and I'm very proud of that. But they would think, well, you know, what are you doing, you know, all of that for? Can't you just kind of sit back and, you know, relax and just, you know, be taken care of? No, no, that's not what I could do. 
In fact, you know, my dad would never pick up the phone and call Lou Wasserman and say, put Dina in your movie. That's not something. He would say, go down and read for the movie. If you make it good, if you don't, it's too bad. He taught me about business. So really from the outside world, I didn't have people who were saying, oh, you know, I, well, maybe they said, I don't get it. I don't know why she's doing all of that. Right. But it was always in a positive way. And even if I think someone had said, why are you doing that? I was like, because I want to do this. Because I'm curious about it. Because it makes me, it makes me happy to do this. And I think it's all about, you know, in life, we should be happy. You know, we don't have to think about the, you know, bad things. All right. So, you know, that didn't work out. I didn't get that part. Okay. Well, there's going to be another part. I'll go read for the next part. Uh, I didn't get that audition. Okay. There's another one. I'll go do that. And it was uh, quite, uh, quite amazing to have the appearance that I had and had the upbringing that I had. And it was, you know, inspiring for me. Oh, definitely. I'm inspired listening to you because <laughs> I, I think it's so important. I think being curious is so important and having good morals and a value and a compass, an inner compass that allows us to, to really let that curiosity unfold into all these amazing things, you know, that we get to try out. So I love what you're saying. And it, I think it's so true, you know, and it's great that your family had that connection in a it, way that, that supported all of you you know, ethically, morally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, like all across the board. Oh, thank you for saying, and it's true. I just got, I just got chills, you know, because I'm, I'm remembering, you know, uh, growing up, you know, there were seven of us, seven kids. You know, I went to live with my dad when I was nine. That's when he got custody of us. And so I moved in. I had two new brothers and a new sister. And, but magically, you know, uh, you know, my, my mom, you know, made it all work. So we didn't feel like we didn't, or we weren't a part of it. It was all, we were all, it was all family, one, you know, happy family. Now imagine seven kids. And if each one had a friend over, that's 14 people right there, all, you know, already, you know, running around the house. But we had, we had a, a good time. Everybody wanted to come to our house. I'll bet. I can totally believe it. Yes. To our house because it was fun. <laughs> people were fun, you know, and there was, as I say, respect. And, you know, dinner was at this time and you weren't late for dinner. You know, you have to, you have to be here. This is what we're doing. And I remember actually, and, you know, and so I think back and I think, oh, thank God I was brought up the way I was, is I would have girlfriends who would yell at their, I'd go over to their house, they'd yell at their parents and get out and go, what, what? You would never say no or <laughs> yell at your parents. That was, it wasn't in our, in our makeup. So it was always, you know, uh, shocking to me. I said, no, you do what you're, we were all good kids. I have to tell you that because we respected my dad. And my mom, mm -hmm. and uh, as I say, you know, just uh, brought up right. And with, um, and we would go on adventures and we'd play games at, at home. Right. And mm -hmm. so your mom and dad modeled respect. Yes. And so it was easy to respect them and natural for that mutual respect to happen. Yeah. And there were, you know, uh, no voices were raised or anything. I remember if we did something wrong, you know, because now remember six brothers and sisters and, you know, we did something wrong and they'd say, oh, oh, Dina, you're going in the den. Uh oh, when dad gets home, you're going to the den. No, oh, no, not the den. You know, and so, they'd be, oh, no, the den. So you go and you know, sit in the den. Then I'd hear my dad come in. He'd open the door. He closed the door behind him. He'd say, now, Dina, tell your mom I was really tough on you. Okay. Tell her I was really, I was really hard on you. Okay. You know, the tears of God say, okay. And he said, okay, so you'll never be late for dinner again, will you? I said, no, I won't be late for dinner again. He said, okay, I love you and walk out the door. And that was the, that was the den, okay? But we respected him so much. And right. okay, can't be late for dinner ever right. again. And, and you know, Diane, to this day, I haven't been late for dinner. <laughs> okay. I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's, but he had that respect from us because right. we knew, you know, what, what he did and how he lived his life, you know, for, for all of us was just, you know, a phenomenal. And I think that's something that we're, we're, uh, we learn from our parents or whoever is, you know, bringing us up. And uh, it's, it's important. Oh, yes. I think it, I like how it was all modeled that way. And I mean, I have goosebumps just hearing this. So how have you maintained your joy and your curiosity with a year of not being able to travel or entertain and like on this lockdown? And, and it's like, you take somebody like you, who's always out there and curious and in, front of audiences and doing your gift. And then it's like, well, we can't do that for a year. So 
how did you keep your joy going during all of these really interesting times? It's, it's a very good question. And, you know, I have to say, because we were on the road 280 days out of the year. Right. And I do not miss the packing and pack. Okay. <laughs> you know, packing, you know, suka, oh, 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 you know, packing, unpacking, you know, all the gowns and the shoes. But so I had two, let me see. So, it, well, actually, so it had to be May of last year, March, April. Or it was March, I think, when it happened. March. Right, end of March, right? Exact end of March. And I had two sold out shows at Herb Alford's Vibrato, a jazz, a, you know, mm-hmm. a, a jazz club in Bel Air, Beverly Hills. Two sold out ones. And he canceled, he, had to, he ended up having to cancel it like the day before. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, what am I going to do for all, you know, all the people who, you know, I know will come back and they'll be able to, you know, see the show. But I had already learned all these songs and I had everything set. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? So Rosario, my fabulous assistant, said, why don't you do a Facebook Live show? I said, what's Facebook Live? <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, you know, you have your, it's, it's on Facebook. You have a Facebook page. I said, I know. I said, I didn't even know they did that because I was on the road. I didn't know what they were doing. Right, so I right. thought, well, you know what? I was going to do the show for them. And I have, you know, I'm sitting here in my uh, studio and I have all the tracks, you know, because when I do a record, an album or whatever, we do the music and then I'll put my voice on it. So I have all of my music that has no voice on it. So I can sing live here in my studio. So what we did was I thought, OK, well, we'll do a Facebook live show. And we did that. In fact, uh, day before yesterday, whatever it was, Friday, that was my 62nd consecutive week of doing Facebook live shows. So. My husband and I and Rosario, we're writing the shows. I'm learning new songs. Okay. So this is, you know, I have my, my songs. We write the show every week. We get new jokes. Sometimes I just tell them badly and people just laugh anyway. They say, oh, keep, keep that in. You know, I said, okay. Right. Because my dad would keep all the mistakes in. So right. it's live. So doing the show every week for 62 weeks, we've done it, learning new songs. And so for me, I'm happy. Because I'm learning new songs, I'm, I'm staying active and we're, I'm, I'm working, you know, that's good. The only drawback for me is that, you know, it's just Rosario and John. So when I sing, they go, yay. You know, there's two right, people. Like, the energy yeah. exchange yeah. is not the same. You know, and I tell Joe, they go, oh, that's funny. Go, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. So I have to tell you, last weekend, uh, my publicist, it was his uh, wedding. He was getting married in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we said, absolutely, we will, we will be there. So John and I, it was the first time we're going out. And so we went out, we got on two different flights because to get from here to Nashville, it's two flights, Charlottesville, and then the Nashville. And then we get to the wedding and he asked me, of course, to sing a song. And I picked out, you're nobody till somebody loves you. I love the that band song. was, I love it too. And the band was great. And uh, so the, the wedding was fabulous. And then they said, all right, Dina, now. You know, it's time for Dina Martin to sing. They gave me the microphone. I got on stage and all of a sudden it was like, oh, the sound was beautiful. There were a couple hundred people. And, you know, and I, I yeah, and, and me too. And I got and I thought, oh, this is what I, I miss this so much because it was the feedback of the, the energy. The people were so happy that we were there yes. and, you know, that I was singing and that I brought back, you know, many memories for them and this beautiful uh, you know, the brand new Westbys, you know, husband and wife. And she was so adorable. She couldn't believe she's married. And, you know, I'm singing and all these people are up and they're cheering. So it was, I thought, oh my, this, I really missed this. The Facebook live things have, it kept all of my, uh, everybody all over the world. You know, we had, uh, I think just in the past month alone, 2 million views. Okay. So I'll get 300,000 views on a show from everywhere in the world. So they're watching it. Because that's what I was giving back to people who were stuck. You know, I mean, when we go back, you know, about a year, the people were stuck in their homes. They right. couldn't get out. They right. have no friends. They couldn't see their parents. They couldn't uh, go to, you know, see their uh, their children, anything. And so right. I thought it was me giving back to them. And now, of course, you know, all the comments I get, please don't ever stop. <laughs> please, right. please keep going. At, you know, I go, well, I'm going to have to go out sometime. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what I did. But I had... I had missed, I didn't realize how much I had missed being there live with, you know, musicians and the audience and, uh, you know, touching people that way. Right. It, it's, it's so 
it's both sides of the coin. I work a lot with musicians. Almost all of my private clients are musicians. And we talk about the, that energy exchange between the audience and them. And, and they, a lot of them did a lot of Facebook Lives and are still doing them to stay connected and keep their creative juices going. And But there's also, there's nothing that can be understated about that audience connection. And then when I step back and I talk to people in the audience, they're like, oh, good, we get to have live performance again. It's that same yearning and that same wanting to be connected to the music and the artist and the meaning and the depth of it. And it's a universal thing. And so it's both sides of the coin and very eloquently said by you. And I want to tell everybody who's listening, I'm going to put the link to Dina's Facebook and everything in the show notes. So if you want to see some of those, you can go back and you can follow her and see what's going on. Because when she hits the road again, you're going to have to travel to see her live. Oh, so I don't think she's okay. going to be doing Facebook lives every week and traveling. Uh, no, you know, I'll take my phone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, it's it's one of those things that just keeps the flow going and allows your curiosity and your artisanship to keep flourishing and growing instead of being stunted exactly you know let me say one more thing because you know to have the musicians to have my musicians there mm -hmm. and you know and a, a couple of my you know my uh my music director rick creevy who lives in boca raton you know every, everything was shut down for everybody but right. i he has been writing new charts for me every week two new week so he's been he's been going he's been getting paid so you know so he's you know so we're keeping that and then my uh my saxophone player, then we'll send it to him and he'll lay down some tracks. So that's all fabulous. So they've been working. Right. But what I do miss is when you're up there live with your musicians, they bring in whatever happened in their lives. Yes. You know, so it's not the same old, you know, thing. It's they're coming. Maybe they had a great day. Maybe they didn't have such a good day, but they're there and we're making the music and it's always different and it's live. Yes. And, you know, and, and to hear, uh, you know, the response from people. And to have, you know, one of my musicians say, oh, you know, I mean, and, and them laugh at one of my jokes, a new joke. You know, it's the whole thing is it's so perfect. It's like this one big happy family, a happy family, mind you. And even though they may have had, you know, not a great day, but the music brings us together. The mm -hmm. audience is there. So it's the it's the whole it's the whole mixture of everything, you know, and it's all these fabulous people yeah. coming together and it. You know, hopefully we make people feel good and make, you know, they, they cry because the music is so touching. It just touches your soul. Yes. And that's that joy. That's that yeah. joy. The, their tears of joy is from that touching, that deep joy yes. soul, you know, and, and that's so beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. You have uh -oh. a joke, a joke you remember that you want to tell everybody? One of your funny oh, jokes? Okay. You know what? Yeah. Okay, here's, here's a good one. Um you know, I said, my girlfriend, you know, since we're, we're home all the time and, you know, my girlfriend has been cooking so many TV dinners, she thinks she's in show business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's Ooh. one of my favorites. Everybody was stuck at home. You know, it's, it's, it's cute. And, uh, you know, and I'm trying to think of what, what I'm going to say. What did I just do on Friday? Um, you know, there's so many and people, what's great is people are sending in jokes to me in the <laughs> comments. They will send me jokes. Now I got one from Sandra friends the other day and she said, uh, she said, a weasel walks into a bar and the bartender says, oh, gee, I've, I've never served a weasel. What'll you have? Weasel said, pop goes the weasel. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, so, I mean, I need clean jokes that, right. you know, people would go. Pop goes the weasel, you know, and they yes. just laugh. You know, it's it's cute. But people send me jokes. And, you know, I've got two guys, Chuck Vodica and Chuck Foster. They send me, you know, great jokes all the time. You know, I mean, it's, but everybody from all over the world. I get jokes from London, you know, from uh, Mike Lane uh, uh, this year. I, I know uh, it's uh, it's remarkable. And some people have to tune in, you know, to to hear the jokes, you know, and then my husband would go, oh, you know, and Rosario go, Oh, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, and that's why that's, it's, it's like what we're doing, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's important. Yes. It's, I think it's very important and it keeps everybody moving forward. So you are, are obviously very um, full of life and very talented. How does your intuition play into all of your work? 
Very interesting. I get feeling, you know, my husband laughs at me, you know, because I say, I know things, you know, and I do, I, I know things. <laughs> you know things, right. That's Before something's going to happen and, uh, you know, and I, and I feel it and I know, okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, he thinks he would, he'd probably just die if he knew I'm saying this, but I, there are things that, you know, that I know, and, you know, it just comes to me. Come to my show, you know, I can tell, you know, we got to watch out for this one. Uh, you know, it, it's over there, but it's intuition about what I should be doing, what I should not be doing. And, you know, it comes to me and I can tell, I, okay, so now you're just going to think I'm nuts. I can tell when someone's going to call me sometimes, you know, so I'm going to, you know, ah, you know, I bet that's, uh, you know, my sister. <laughs> right, and you'll be right. And you'll be right. And yeah, I'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I go, what? <laughs> well, so, I, I have a theory that people who have like multi-talents and who have a lot of joy and connection, like we're talking about, have a real sense of connection people call i'm using the word intuition because that's what's popular but you know it's like yeah. that sense of connection you just know things and and i know it happens to me and i know a lot of the people i work with it happens to so i was really curious i said i'll bet you dina has a lot of that that knowingness that sense um as you kind of work your way through things so i i, I was betting on that so yeah no i do and i have to tell you and i feel you know, I, I'm surrounded in, in my home and in the studio, you, you can't see, but I, you know, I have photographs from Capitol Records that my handsome husband uh, got for me for uh, Christmas, big photographs that hang on the wall in Capitol Studios in Hollywood. And I remember walking down the hallway to Studio A, one of my first times going down there to, to, to hear my dad record. And I walked down with my mom. And here's the pictures lining the wall. And it's Bobby Darren, Peggy Lee, Matt King Cole, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. And I'm we're looking at all of these and I'm going down into Studio A. And all of a sudden we walk into Studio A. They're all the musicians. My dad's standing at the podium. He's singing. And, you know, and the backup singers are over there. I think they were called the Easy, Re Easy Riders. And he was recording Memories Are Made of This. And they were singing Sweet, Sweet. The memories you gave to me this can't be the memories. And all of a sudden, my dad starts singing, and I'm sitting on a little folding chair. And it was just glorious. And he was singing, Memories Are Made of This. Mm -hmm. And I was there in that studio when he recorded it. And I will never forget that. That's one of the reasons I named my book, Memories Are Made of This, Dean Martin Through His Daughter's Eyes. And so it was so amazing for me. Then years later, when I went back, to record in Studio A. I felt everybody who was there. I used my dad's microphone and, you know, and I, I felt comforted. I knew that I was going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Nat King Cole's piano over here. And, you know, it was a remarkable feeling. It was overwhelming. I couldn't get through the first song, but then all of a sudden I knew I was all right. There were people who were protecting me sure. and they were all, all around. So it was really kind of, you could feel their presence in the, the oh, yeah. walls and yeah. the space. And, yeah, and I knew dialed, I would say that. Yeah. You know, once, once you dialed into that joy and that creative spirit, it just started flowing through you. That's it so did. beautiful. That is so yeah. beautiful. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, so it's just delicious to me. So I, I have, this is kind of a random question, but I'm very curious about, since you've traveled all over, what is the most memorable food you've ever eaten? Most memorable food. Oh, that's good. Uh, come to think of it, it was, um, it was, I think they called a paper wrapped chicken, but it was at the, uh, and I'm trying to think it was on La Cienega Boulevard because I mean, traveling all over the world, I've been there, but the one that comes to mind was it was chicken. It was called paper wrapped chicken at this uh, a Chinese restaurant that my mom used to take us to. And it was a little cup of, um, lettuce and they put this fabulous little chicken in it and you would roll it up because I'd never rolled up a lettuce leaf and eaten, you know, like that. I mean, I was a young girl, but I'll, I'll never forget the taste of that. So it was, they called it paper wrapped chicken, but it wasn't, it was in a lettuce leaf and I'll never forget that. But I have been all over the world, as you know, but right. you know, my favorite is going to Italy and having, um, oh gosh, when I would have the, uh, Pasta Bajul there, you know, Ooh. after my grandmother had taught me how to make it, it was different. 
in um, in Tuscany, it was different from in Rome. You know, everybody has their own uh, pasta vajoule recipe. In fact, I had an argument with Sophia Loren once because we were we were doing something at NIAP in Washington. All right. And it was an awards show for the national um, uh, Italian, uh, American Italian at foundation. And so we were sitting in the green room and uh, Sophia said, you know, we, uh, you know, I would love for your husband and you to come to my house in Malibu and we'll, you know, have a little dinner. I said, great. And she said, no, make pasta visual. I said, oh, OK, how do you are red beans or white? She said, red. I said, no, no, white beans and pasta visual. <laughs> and I said, do you use tomatoes? She said, yes. I said, no, no. No tomatoes in pasta, you know, in the pasta vajoule, you know, it's, it's got to be the cannellini, you know, got cannellini beans, the white ones, the tubatini. And uh, and she's looking at me and my husband's going, wait a minute, you're talking Sophia Loren out of asking us to come to dinner. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, she just doesn't make it the way my grandmother made it. And, you know, there's lots of ways to make pasta vajoule, but not with red beans and there's no garlic and there's no tomatoes. So just as if Sophia's watching, I'm still, I still don't think you should put tomatoes in your pasta visual. <laughs> okay. So Sophia, listen, will you please? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that is genius. That is wonderful. Yeah. So I, I want to thank you for being on the show and I want to be respectful of your time. And, but I want to know if there was anything you wanted to share today that I didn't ask you about, because I do have one final question for you, but I want to okay. share. I want to make sure that your heart's full and that you were able to say what you wanted. Now, of course, in the show notes will be your bio and all the links and links to your books and links to your albums. And so people can can follow you, purchase your things and, and learn more about you. So that's all in the show notes. Is there something that you wanted to share about that I didn't ask you about? Uh, no, you've asked about everything, which is great. And, you know, I talk a lot. You know, but, you know, we do have a documentary coming out about, you know, uh, the King of Cool, about, you know, Dean Martin. And we have interviewed so many people. I mean, it's it's spectacular. It will be fabulous together. So it's been a um, a long, uh, we've been doing it for a, a few years and it's going to be spectacular. It's, it's you know, the people who are putting it together, they're called Creative Chaos and they are beautiful. I mean, you're beautiful interviews and everyone has been very respectful to my dad. So that's something that's coming out. And all of the music that Rick has written for me for this past year, the new songs that I've been learning, we're going to record those. And, you know, and I want to thank all the people who have requested songs. I have two new ones for this Friday, uh, The Days of Wine and Roses. And uh, what is the other? Uh, the Days of Wine and Roses and Open Up the Door and Let the Good Times In. Ooh. All right. So, yeah. So open yes. up the door. So. I get those new songs every week and I learn them. So we're going to be putting out an album of all the, uh, all the songs that we have done for this past 62, 65 weeks, uh, you know, the past year. So we'll be doing that, but I would love for them to come onto Facebook live and, and watch the show, send me comments and they can request songs they'd like to hear. And I'll see if I can get to them. And, uh, and thank you so much for what you're doing. You made thank this you. a very wonderful uh, interview and it's uh uh, you know, it's always scary. You never know what's uh, going <laughs> what's right, going to happen. Yeah, you that's never, right. You never, never know. Well, everybody, you're listening to Dina Martin, and there's so much to her that we could we just barely are scratching the surface. So I really implore you to follow her, go to her Facebook Live, and learn more about her because one of the things that you'll see that in the in the DNA, as you say, is not only is there deep joy in her whole family, but there's this ability to connect deeply with themselves and others. And I think it's important that we really pay attention to this moving forward in our culture, in our world. And so we have a great person here to kind of inspire us to keep on going and letting our light shine. So I wanna thank you for being on the show and for inspiring me today. And I have one final question for you that um, I can't wait to hear your answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is that if we were gonna have a billboard put up that the whole world would see with Dina Martin's quote on it, what's on that billboard? Well, you know, being a pilot, what I would uh, say is it's not about the destination. It's about the journey along the way. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love okay. it. And the journey <laughs> along the way when you're curious and you're exploring and you start the day off getting things done and you're paying attention. Great yeah. things happen. So I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. 
So everybody, you've been listening to Dina Martin, and I want to remind you that you're a rock star. You're here on purpose with a purpose. So let your light shine. Pay attention to the journey, not the destination. And know that until the next episode, if someone gets me, be well. Thank you for listening. I trust you gained some valuable inspiration and information. Please join me and other visionaries in the Someone Gets Me Facebook group. Or for more information on my services and additional episodes, visit someonegetsme.com. Again, thanks for listening.